Today we're going to talk about calibration and your multimeters, specifically at the hobbyist level using a voltage reference source. Now, I used to work in reliability engineering years and years ago as a technician, and all of that equipment would go through yearly calibration testing and get this nice little calibration sticker on it, meaning that what we were reading was accurate. However, as a hobbyist, I don't need that level of precision. In fact, maybe a tenth, a hundredth of a percent is, is more than I typically need. You know, I'm looking for ballpark, where, uh, is this five volts going into this digital circuit? That's really the kinds of stuff I'm looking for, is the, is the resistance close enough? So what we're going to do today is take a look at a couple different voltage reference sources that I've picked up. I'll tell you where you can get these from. And we are going to do the poor man's calibration. I have a multimeter that I know for a fact is not correct. Um, and I know that because it doesn't match some others. And we'll talk about how you determine if it's not correct or not. And we'll use these voltage references to see how to make them correct. Now, keep in mind, if you decide that you want to do some very high-end, super accurate uh, hobbyist electronics, maybe you're doing um, medical stuff, spaceborne stuff, by all means, send your uh, equipment into a calibration lab. They're all over the place. Um, and they'll do the right job for you and give you a level of confidence. That's not what this is about. This is about taking low-end multimeters and some voltage references and just trying to get them more accurate. All right, guys. Well, let's take a look at the lab. Let's look at my multimeters, and let's see if we can fix one of them. All right. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you'll get a good enough picture with this uh, camera angle. So I'm going to go ahead and put in probes to this multimeter, and I'm going to turn it on to voltage. Then I'm going to turn on this source, and you can see it automatically goes to 10 volts. I'm going to go ahead and touch the probe, and we're getting 8.586 volts. So this must be the bad one. So I'm going to set this aside for a second and grab my other one, bring it in here. And we'll try this one, Let's see. can you see it? Yes, okay. So we've got, move my hand out of the way. We've got 10 volts, 10.00 volts showing on the voltage reference, and we got 10.008 volts showing there. So this is the meter that I think is much more accurate. Now we can take some of the other sources as well, other voltage references. So let's try this voltage reference that um, has the numbers written on it. So we're gonna go ahead and use this one. We're gonna go ahead and power it on. Now I'm using my power supply, which you can't see, but okay. So now we've got a red light on this one. And the way this, this works is, let me grab my glasses, is five volts is actually right here. And you can kind of see it. It says five, you can't probably see it, but it says five volts there. So I'm, I'm holding it here. And there we go. So on, written on this for V2 is 5.0020. And I'm getting 5.002. So that is pretty accurate. Um, and it's probably safe to say that this uh, voltage reference is also fairly accurate. So when you get, obviously, readings that are uh, consistent across devices, then that gives you a sense of uh, correctness or accuracy within it. Um, and let's go ahead and try this other one. I have a battery in it, this um, X-Tech one. So this is kind of interesting. This one, you actually can plug it in to the device. So we'll plug it in. 
see how it's plugged in. I'm going to turn it on. Now it has a switch on it, and that switch can be put into volt mode or amp mode. And you can turn the knob here to set the voltage. So there's 2.25. So, in my opinion, this isn't quite as nice as the other one, but if you have multi, a dual multi, uh, multimeters, and of course you could dial this in. So let's say, let's dial it to, to 5 volts. Okay. I'm, I'm bringing it back down again. Okay, five volts even. So I'm gonna turn this meter off. Now I'm going to turn the meter on that doesn't work, or isn't accurate, I should say. And let's see what we get. 4.293. So this was actually quite a bit off. Let's try a different meter. Let's see if this one has a battery in it. Yes, okay, so let's try this one. This is a, a low end, fairly cheap one. In fact, the case is coming off of it. Four point nine nine. You know, for a cheap meter, that's not bad. In fact, it's it's flipping back and forth between five volts. So that's that's actually pretty impressive. Um, I think the case isn't screwed on correctly because I needed to put a battery in it. I must have done that just a little while ago. But that's pretty good. So now we've got two meters, both saying five volts. So we can pretty much feel confident that we're looking at 5 volts. Now let's go ahead and turn this off and let's go back to our reference source which we know is 5 volts. And what we can do is fix this. We're going to fix this um, multimeter. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to open up the back. Let's see here. Let's open up the back. I am looking for a screwdriver. Here we go. Open it up, hopefully. Okay. Okay, so let's see here. So what I'm going to do is if we take a look at this you will see that there's a pot here so normally that's what you're looking for is a pot there's a pot here there's a pot here there's a pot here a potentiometer here two there this one actually says VR1 uh, DCV so that's the one we're actually going to change so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put power to this voltage reference so that it's on. <clears throat> I am going to get some leads and plug them into this device on the front. Or power it on, yes, I know there's no battery in it yet. We're going to go ahead and squish this battery down. I'm going to hold it with my hand. Okay. Okay. So now I'm pressing it in with my hand and we are going to get a voltage off of this device. I might need to come up with a better solution for this. Hold on. Yeah, let's... um. Yeah, let's um, go ahead and hook some um, alligator clips to this. So let me turn it off. Grab some alligator clips. Doesn't matter the color. Okay, so I know that this is positive and this is negative. So we're going to go OK. 
Okay, that should be it. Things are making contact. Okay, so now I'm going to hold the battery back in place and turn it on. Make sure that these are making contact. Doesn't feel like they were. Okay, there we go. We've settled out at 4.298 volts, and we know that that's not right. This is 5.002. We already proved it to ourselves. So I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to put a screwdriver into this pot, and I'm going to turn it one way or the other. I'm not sure which. So I'm going to put it in, turn it, and then check it. Oh, okay, so I'm going the right direction. That's pure luck. So we're now showing five volts. Now we need to turn it back down a little bit. I'm trying to let you see this. Okay, a little bit more. Doesn't seem to be changing. A little bit there. You know, probably good enough as it is, but I'm going to try to turn it down a little bit more. So that's actually pretty good, especially if you're only looking for a hundredth, uh, tens, hundredths, thousandths place, you know, hundredths place. Um, but just for the heck of it, let me see if I can get it just a little bit more. Oh, I see. The, uh, the probe was not all the way in. I'm going to turn it a little bit more. If I can just get this in there. There we go. Maybe I can do it right here. And actually watch what I'm doing. Yeah, there you go. That's the ticket. I'm making really small adjustments. There we go. And that actually matches the voltage reference, which we had checked with other devices. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so now we fixed it. So what's the point of this whole uh, exercise? Well, by getting a voltage reference, let me go ahead and power this one off. By getting a voltage reference, you then can basically test some of your uh, test equipment to see if it's accurate or not. This one, I'll put a link to it. I get no money from it. This is one I picked up on Amazon. I think I paid $17 for it. However, you probably can find it cheaper someplace else. You might even be able to make your own. Um, I'll leave a link for this one as well. Uh, I don't know how accurate it is, but it seems to be fairly accurate. So after setting the multimeter calibrating it basically with this I then can you know check it against this one or this one that I picked up on eBay used so anyway I hope you found this helpful um, it's not a bad idea if you know for a fact you've got a, a couple multi well you need you're gonna need a couple multimeters obviously because you can use them to check each other um, but if you got one that's off and you can open it up and adjust it internally it's not a bad idea however if you need to have extremely accurate and it needs to be calibrated uh, by a professional obviously send your meters in um, to ha have them calibrated you're probably going to be using fluke devices at that point anyway um, all right well remember learn something new every day thanks guys bye